Hey everyone, today we're going to be having a look at Monsoon's Hardline Premium Fittings. If you arrived here from your favorite reseller, you very likely saw a message similar to this in the product description. It says Monsoon Hardline Premium Fittings featuring Hardlock are designed specifically for enthusiasts, pro modders, OEM system builders, high performance servers and workstations, or any installation that requires mission critical reliability. If you're not familiar with that term, mission critical, that basically means you've identified any potential failure points within a system and you've eliminated them to increase the system reliability. Um, one way to look at this would be uh, if, you, if you see the word pro in the marketing write-up of a product, it's not unusual for that to sort of be hype, but in this specific instance, I actually did design these fittings for this group of people. Um, one way to look at that is uh, anyone in this group is essentially someone who is either building or selling PCs to make a living. Obviously, you don't have to be in this group to use the fittings. If you like to leave your machine on overnight while you fold, or you've got little kids in the house, or you basically just want that extra reliability, you're good to go. How we get that extra reliability is uh, with this little acrylic lock collar. And uh, essentially what I did when I did the design as I borrowed a page from the building industry, if you look at refrigeration or gas lines in your house, there's a little ferrule that fastens to the side of the tube, and that gives the compression ring, the flange inside the compression ring, something to grip when it drives the tube into the seal. You can't do that with acrylic tube because it would break, obviously, but we've gotten around that by using, like I said, these little um, molded acrylic lock collars. I'll be showing you how to install these on the tube a little later in the video, but what it does is it gives you a flange for the compression ring to grip onto and it dramatically increases the surface area of the seal on the end. It also, I'm not sure if you've ever looked at Hardline 2 before, but the wall thickness is 1.5 millimeter or about a sixteenth of an inch. It's not exactly thin, but it's not really all that beefy either. So the lock collar increases the mass on the end of the tube and just gives everything a little bit of extra strength. Um, before I show you the standard types of connectors used on hardline tubing, I um, want to make the point that I'm not criticizing pushing connectors in general or any specific brand of these. They are very good for what they're intended for, which is, um, I don't want to say average users because we don't have any average customers, but um, I'd say typical user who builds a system, puts it on his desk, there's no kids running around the house, he can occasionally reach inside and push the tube in, make sure everything's okay. He's not putting it in the trunk of his car to travel across town to a LAN, or he's not the customer, you know, OEM shipping systems out to people. Um, the two types of fittings that I was talking about, um, they essentially both work the same way. There's an O-ring inside, or one or more O-rings inside. Uh, whether you're using metal or acrylic, the term push-in comes from the fact that you just quite simply push the fitting into the base. Where these are not absolutely ideal for critical uh, mission critical installations is the fact that you can, without too much effort, remove the tube also. That's not optimal for a mission critical installation. Uh, the other type uses a, adds a compression ring. Works very similar. You push the tube down inside. The O-ring seals on the side of the tube instead of the end of the tube, which isn't really what O-rings are designed to do, but it does work. After you've pushed the tube in, you tighten it down. It gives you a little bit better holding power than the push-in type, but still nowhere near the maximum reliability we're talking about with the hard lock. Um, again, Monsoon sells both styles of these. I'm not, you know, there's no need to get in the forum and tell me I'm full of crap, because I'm not saying anything bad about those. They are fine for, again, typical installations. These are designed at a very specific, different group of people that want that mission-critical reliability. I can show you how that works. I've already got the base put in here you can kind of tell what's coming. I've got the flange that I discussed and the much wider seal. What essentially happens is the flange in the compression ring engages the flange on the lock collar and then the extra wide surface on the end is driven into the seal. It's pretty basic stuff. Um, I don't know if it'll show up on the camera or not, but as, as you see there, as I tighten down the compression ring, I'm just finger tight right now. It's probably already at 5 PSI. The tube is much more solid in the fitting. Tighten that down. 
This is a 30 pound, I guess they're called dumbbells. That's what we mean when we talk about mission critical reliability. I can go home tonight, sleep like a baby, come back tomorrow, it'll be just like that. Uh, come back in a month or in six months or a year, it's going to be the same way. When you absolutely positively need to know that the tube is secured to the fitting, hard lines, hard lock. All right, I showed you how the acrylic uh, lock collars give you that mission critical uh, hard lock capability to your tube. Before I show you how to install those on your tube, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tube itself and the fittings. Um, the new hardline fittings come in all three available styles of premium fittings. We have the free center. I don't have the carbon fibers here to show you, but your reseller will carry those. And we have the chain guns. Um, the hardline is just like the soft line. Uh, free centers and carbon fibers come in a six pack and individually. And the free centers come in four packs and individually. Um, all of the uh, one other thing I want to talk about is the modularity of these. Uh, I don't think people realize that the entire range of premium fittings is modular, and what that means basically is if you've got a bunch of free center five eighths inch fittings in your build, and you want to switch over for your next build to chain guns, the uh, compression rings all work with the barbs, so you don't have to replace the barbs themselves. That's not just within one tube type. Uh, it also works if you want to switch. You've got hundred dollars of free center uh, soft line fittings and you want to convert your build over to hard line. You could either buy another hundred dollars worth of hard line fittings or you can buy just the bases which are sold in six packs and are depending on your reseller are going to be about half the cost. So that hundred dollars worth of fittings would actually be about fifty dollars. Um, that also allows you to mix and match uh, tube types within your build and have the fittings be the same. So if you had a case that split into you know, an upper and lower level, you could do the top level in hardline tube and then maybe because of the smaller space requirement on the bottom, you want to run soft tube, you can do that and have the fittings match. Our full line of light port and standard rotaries, which are available in 90 and 45, and all 10 of our color finishes also are sized to fit both types of fittings. Um, if you're not familiar with the light ports, what that is uh, basically is a port on the back that allows you to either add a matching or color contrasting stop plug, uh, LED plug, which allows you to shoot light down through the tube. We have a temperature pro plug, which allows you to get temperature at various points in your system. And there's anti, there are antimicrobial plugs. Again, those come in all 10 of the color finishes, so you can mix and match however you'd like to. What that basically means is if you are, are all of our reservoirs and everything also are available in all 10 colors. Uh, if, like in this case, you can see I've got green stop plug, green uh, rotary fitting, and a green fitting itself. Um, you could use green tube on this if that's what your build required. Um, essentially, you're just going to be able to create any color combination you need to match what you're doing. Uh, in this case, you'd probably want to go get blue rotary, chrome accessories probably go with a blue tube. If your motherboard was blue and black, you could use the black rotary. Blue plugs and fittings, you could either go with a black tube or the blue tube. You're going to get any combination you need. The tube itself comes in two sizes. There's a 3 8 by 1 half. Uh, that's a nominal 13 millimeters. And there's a 1 half by 5 8 which is a nominal 16 millimeters. Um, both of these are going to give you really good flow rates. Um, we really just added the larger size because over the last 15 years of using soft line tube, we've all sort of become accustomed to what the tube should look like size wise inside the build. And the first time you see the smaller size of the hard line, you might feel like that that visually looks a little bit puny. So if you want to add a little more weight to the tube visually in your build, we've got the larger size. Um, all of this is going to take care of all your color needs. Uh, you know, you're pretty much set. You've got plenty of choices to customize your build however you want to. Next up, we're going to show you how to install the lock collars onto your tube. All right, I showed you the lock collars earlier and I discussed the mission critical reliability that you get with them. Uh, now we're going to talk about how to actually install them on your tube. First things first, you want to make sure you have a clean square end on the tube. Uh, that's not something that's specific to uh, our monsoon fittings. You're going to want to do that with 
any fitting that you use. Um, how I like to do that is we have these miter boxes machined out of aluminum that we sell as part of our tool kits. They come with a saw and the reamer. There's a, I'll have another video that covers all this, but basically you just want to wrap the tube with blue painter's tape. Pop it into your miter box where your mark is for your length. You're going to take your saw and do your cut and because it's a miter box. It'll give you a nice square cut on the end, which is what we're after. They again, come in both sizes for the 13 millimeter and the 16 millimeter tube. That's the half inch and 5 eighths inch OD tubes. You're going to want to then take your reamer. And you're going to do the inside and the outside of the tube. I've noticed when I watch people work, they tend to get really carried away with the reamer. I think part of that is because if you look at the photographs on most reseller websites, they've basically used the reamer until the tube's like a pencil point. Obviously they do that so that it shows up in the photographs, but really all, all you want to do is just break the sharp edges on that. You don't want to go crazy with the reamer. I then went over to the sink. If you bent all your tube, you've been handling it. You've got oil from your hands all over it. I like to go over to the sink right before this stage and put a few drops of dish soap in my fingers and get them soaped up. Then I soap the end of the tube, use my pinky and soap inside the lock collar, rinse them off, let them air dry for a few minutes. Um, the adhesives that we're going to be using, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, if you're, oh, next step before we get to that, I've got myself a little note right here that says remember the compression ring. And I say this because if you've already bent the tube and you've got a lot of bends on it, it may be hard to get the compression ring on from the other end. So as a, you have to remember if the lock collar is already in place, this is kind of the one critical thing that you have to remember. You can't get the fit the compression ring on after the lock collar. So if you do forget it and you've done fin finished and put all your glue on because it's UV cured, it hasn't kicked off yet, you'll be able to just pull it off, wipe the glue off, put the compression ring on, and then reapply the adhesive. You'll see that in a few minutes when I put the fitting on to show you. But just remember to, uh, I, I make myself a note like this because I have the memory of a fruit fly. And I also put the fitting right next to my adhesive. So that when I pick it up, if I see that, I, oh, I remember. I like to slide it on. And I just take a little bit of the blue painter's tape. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. And I just put it there to kind of hold the fitting out of my way while I'm working. All right. If you've ever seen these, these are uh, your basic home style or Plumbing fittings, these are CPVC, the white ones are PVC. If you've never done this, how it works is there are two cans. One of them is a purple cleaner. They both have daubers. You daub the glue or the cleaner inside this and you hit the pipe and you take the other dauber with the glue and you stick it in there and you put some on the pipe and then you very quickly shove them together and give it a twist. A bunch of glue squirts out the end and in about 15 seconds it's kicked off and, and you've got a joint that's good, you know, 50 or 60 PSI for city water pressure. Um, these are just used around the world there must be several billion of them installed at this point because they've been around for about 50 years now i guess um, the room you're sitting in probably has a hundred of them in the walls around you they're just i mean it's just a generic plumbing type fitting the reason i bring them up is because you could use that type of um, adhesive which is called a solvent cement and what it does is it dissolves the plastic and then a bunch of things like that happen um, the reason i don't recommend that or weld on is because uh, what I talked about earlier, you have to work very rapidly, you shove the parts together, a bunch of uh, the adhesive squeezes out, it makes a mess, it's stressful. Um, the plumber doesn't care, he wants to get the job done quickly and move on to the next one so he can get paid. We obviously want something you know, a little nicer, a little cleaner, so the type of adhesive I'm going to be showing you, you can get at your reseller, where you bought your fittings. Um, it comes in a little black bottle that is 10 milliliters. Uh, it includes uh, chips and a little zippy bag that are stapled to the label. Um, the bottles are actually easier to use than the gun you're going to see me use. We do lots and lots of acrylic assembly here, so we buy the glue uh, by the liters, so we recharge the cartridges. The bottle's just the right size to give you a really good, easy control. The tips make sure you don't have a ton of adhesive coming out. It's also a medium viscosity, so where you put it, it tends to stay. It's not going to run all over the place. Um, I bring all this up to just, you know, I need to really emphasize the point to you that this is not like any other adhesive you've ever used where there's that stress because you have to hurry and it gets everywhere and it's eating the plastic. Um, to demonstrate my point, um, if you get a little on your finger, the phone rings or whatever, I don't know if this is going to show up on the camera, but if you can see it, I've got adhesive on there. Oh no, it's a terrible thing. I just take one of my little wads of toilet paper. You could do this 10 minutes from now, it doesn't matter. And you just wipe it off. 
toss it in the trash. I'm going to use my t-shirt to... I don't know if you can see that or not, but the tube is just absolutely pristine. There's no damage to it whatsoever. All right. I'm going to walk you through the process. I'm just going to sort of do it, pretend here once to show you while I'm telling you what I'm doing, and then I'm going to do it to show you. Uh, you see right here I've got three of these that I glued up a few hours earlier today. I haven't actually taken these outside yet for the sunlight to cure them. They're ready to go. Um, those three probably took me a minute apiece. So it's a, it's a quick... I mean, you just spent three or four hours bending the tube, so two minutes to put the caps on, not a big deal. If you've used the PVC fittings like I talked about before, you're going to have a tendency to put way more adhesive on than you need. So because we can actually have all this working time, we're going to do it slightly differently. And I'm going to walk, pretend I'm doing the process. Uh, about a millimeter in from the end of the cap, or about a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to put a fairly light bead of adhesive all the way around. I'm going to set the cap down. Same distance in again from the end of the tube. I'm going to, about a sixteenth of an inch, I'm going to put a, a heavier bead of the adhesive down. And I'm just going to walk around the tube and do that. And after I've got it on both, I'm going to push the two pieces together with a little bit of a twist, not too much. And after I put it on, I'm going to notice that there will be a few dry spots. And they'll look like either bubbles or dry spots. If you were using the other adhesives, that would be a terrible thing. You know, oh no. But with this stuff, because it is so low stress and you have all the working time, I'm just going to slide the cap right back off. For the second pass of glue, I'm only going to put it on the tube itself. And I'll put another bead around, about again, about a sixteenth of an inch from the end. I'll slide the cap back on. I'm going to intentionally put too much glue on just to show you that it's not a big deal when you do that. Um, after that second pass, I might look around again and I'll find maybe one or two little spots that are dry. I'll remember where they're at and I'll add just a little bit more. I'll put the cap back on. And after I've done that, I'm probably going to be pretty close to where I want to be. And you'll see me, I'll actually start pushing on the cap in a few places. What that does is it just makes the air, sort of burps the air out of the end. It migrates it down. It'll, the camera may not pick it up, but when you're doing it, you'll very clearly see what I'm talking about. As you push on it, the air will just travel to the end and pop out. After I've got all that done, uh, I'll then, um, again, I'm going to put too much glue on just to show you sort of a worst case scenario and that it's not really a big deal. You'll see me go ahead and show you how to remove the excess glue. All right, here we go. Again, first inside the cap, about a sixteenth of an inch from the edge, I'm going to put pretty light bead of glue. You don't have to be too careful again because this stuff's just really great to work with. Alright, I got that bead in place. And again a sixteenth from inch from the end, this time slightly heavier. I'm going to go all the way around in a continuous bead. You see there I actually intentionally put a lot more extra glue on than I probably need. Just to show you the point. As I put it on I'm twisting a little bit. Uh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but all the way around, about three quarters of it, it's perfect. But from about right here to right there, it's a little bit dry. I'm just going to pull the cap off. If you're using the other types of solvents, then I just discussed, you'd be kind of screwed right now. But the stuff, again, is just great. I only went about halfway around where I saw that there was a dry spot. And again, I'm just giving a little twist as I push it on. Pretty good, a little bubble right there, but I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. I push, the bubble just pops right out. Doing the same thing right here. If you push on this side and you notice that it's causing the air to reform on the other side, you just don't push quite as hard, or it's a little dry still, one or the other. I'm getting that, so I'm going to pop it off one more time. And just go around it with a real light little quickie bead of glue i got to get in the habit of calling this adhesive because it's space age. Alright, push it on and give it a little twist as I go. I forgot to show you, but on the very first pass of adhesive that I put on, it already made a really beautiful, perfect seal on the end of the tube against the inside edge of the cap. But this is already perfect. I, I, should, you know, I could stop right here and it would be fine, but I promised you guys I'd put on a little extra amount of glue here, so... Getting the little air bubbles out. And we're about where we want to be. I don't know if I... Uh, if that shows in the camera, but there's a bubble right there. And it just... You press a little and it goes away. 
All right, didn't get too much glue out, unfortunately. I tried, guys, but um, what, I, what I then do is I've wrapped the tissue around the tube like that, and I've pinched it off a little bit. I'm going to just walk it up to the edge of the tube until it's just touching the cap. Squeeze a little bit, and then I'm just applying a twist. Worked it around. Again, it's already pristine and beautiful. If I was to take this outside right now, I would hold it. Um, for about two minutes on this side and then rotate it around two minutes on the other side. Again, if it's an overcast day or you live somewhere where there's not a lot of sunshine, you can, it doesn't hurt to leave it out for longer. That's really all there is to it. It's really and truly a simple process and the end result, you spend a little extra effort right here to do this part, but you end up with, it's they're much, much easier to install once you're inside the case. You know, once you're elbow deep inside the case and you're trying to put everything on, they're actually a joy to work with. You get the extra wide ceiling surface and, of course, the flange. One last thing I want to cover real quick before I forget. Um, the locking collars are actually molded a slight bit oversized. Uh, we do that because if you're bending your tube, uh, you know, best practice in our bending videos, we talk about this. At the end of one of your bends, you should always try and have two inches or 50 millimeters of tube that hasn't been altered. In the real world, that's not always that easy to do. And sometimes when you're heating it and bending tube, you'll get the end of it slightly out of round. That uh, can be an issue if you're using the push-in type fittings because if the tube's not completely round and you push them in, you're going to get uneven pressure mapping around the seals. The nice thing about the lock collars is that they're built slightly oversized so that when you push it on, there's a little bit of extra room if you've gotten out of round. Um, and because you're using a lock collar that's never been altered by heat, you're going to get a nice perfectly round surface. The ends are going to be perfect. Um, one other thing, if you're doing a fairly complex run of tube and you've got multiple bends in it, by the time you get to the end, you might actually be off a little bit and you're going to be tempted to pull it over and push it in. If you're uh, using the push-in type connectors and the tube's going in at an angle, that's not always good with the hard lock and you've got the end cap on there it's when you tighten it down it's actually going to draw the tube over and make it flat so you you get the added advantage that way that's what it looks like when it's uh, all ready to go outside and be cured again it's just not really a big deal i mean it uh, goes in about a minute flat if i wasn't talking i probably could have done it in a minute or so you guys are all set